Hey my friends, welcome back to Attract Passion. Today we'll be talking about how to know, how to recognize or how to feel, how to notice that you're healing, that you're healing from a trauma, that you're experiencing an emotional healing or that there is a progress that is happening because often we don't notice it or it's hard to notice something that's happening on an emotional level except when we actually enter into a situation that was maybe similar to the one that hurt us but we recognize that we are less reactive and maybe more aware of ourselves like we just become more aware of how we are responding to situations around us so before we start i want to remind you that it's time for you to trust wholeheartedly that what is meant for you is already yours. It's coming to you and it will find you when the time is right. So always know that you don't chase, that you attract things into your life. When you make sure that every single day you don't just do things because you want to experience certain results in return you you want to do things because you want to live wholeheartedly you want to tap into a greater sense of fulfillment in what you're doing you want to kind of turn yourself toward things that open your heart that make you feel or remind you of playfulness of generous sense of playfulness which is a wonderful thing we can do especially if our past was very painful hurtful and we kind of couldn't find the time and capacity to enjoy lives many people have been through this kind of history and that's why it's so important to remind ourselves that we deserve joy, that we deserve being playful, that there is a great capacity of creative imagination within us that could be expressed and that you are good enough to express it and you can use your gifts to do something with them. Often artists find themselves, as artists are often more emotionally sensitive they often find themselves hurting more than other people because we just sense more i'm an artist i know how it is as a little kid i was always more sensitive and when you are more emotionally sensitive you just feel more when somebody is angry close to you you will feel like you're going crazy like you can't stand that anger and later in life when you for example decide to do something with your gifts maybe going onto this endeavor of um, expressing your creative skills or maybe going into business or you know whatever you find joyful for you you may find yourself having a low self-confidence and that may be a great block for you just because um, you are more sensitive and you're afraid that when somebody will maybe laugh at you or will express some criticism towards you that it will completely destroy you i just want to remind you that you do it for yourself you always do it for yourself and if somebody will like your work well it's just a good thing if nobody will like it you know you're doing it for yourself but i know there there is the second part to it which is getting something in return like if you're doing it also to support yourself financially then obviously you're looking for the positive feedback and potentially people that can support your work that can be maybe your clients buyers of what you're offering of course then you're afraid of being rejected or you're afraid of not being accepted which is completely natural but you can't be accepted if you never expose yourself right you can't find clients if you never expose yourself so there is something called process to everything 
there is process to everything. The same as there's process to healing, there's process to everything you're doing. And because people get so attached to what may happen, they often don't go onto that process of actually exploring their capacities, exploring their gifts, exploring what they feel to bring something out of it. So I wanted to make this message today a bit more about noticing that the healing is happening within you, even though maybe we went out of the topic a little bit. I've read some interesting studies and one was that uh, 2017 study on the epigenetic memories uh, being passed down for 14 generations. Researchers have found that descendants of Holocaust survivors have lower levels of hormone cortisol, which helps your body bounce back after trauma. Isn't it interesting? Like, for example, if your grandparents have been suffering because of certain events, your body right now is more resilient to that kind of a suffering, to that kind of a stress. It's so interesting how our biology actually adapts to the situations around us. So you can imagine like whoever you are and wherever you are, most often when you feel stress and when you feel a certain reaction towards something, it's not even yours. It's most probably from your ancestors, from certain things that they couldn't resolve, that they couldn't acknowledge because they had no knowledge, no time, and most probably no opportunities to do that. So it's just another reminder that most of the time when you feel something stressful, especially when it comes to your fears and limiting beliefs and feeling not good enough and feeling unworthy, most of the time it's not even yours. So don't be so hard on yourself when you feel something like that. Don't be so hard on yourself when you feel discomfortable about something. Actually, truly the only way to, to, to grow through these sensations is to, to step into them without confidence. Because confidence, confidence is again, it becomes a skill until it becomes our nature. Like it firstly needs to become a skill until it becomes a part of us. So that's why sometimes or if not often, we say fake it until you make it because you need to pretend that you're confident until you learn how confidence actually works. So at the beginning, you may feel completely artificial. Like if you're an artist and you're looking for having your first exhibition, you may feel completely discomfortable about it. You may feel like you're not ready enough. You may feel you, you haven't produced enough of art yet and your art is not good enough and whatever whatever but then you decide to make that exhibition and you expose your art to public and suddenly you receive a completely different feedback than you thought that you will you thought that nobody will be interested in your work actually at my first art exhibition there were a few paintings that I thought that they are not good enough, that I don't want to dispose them, I don't want to put them onto the walls. And the painting that was to me the most, let's say, I would say the most, uh, the most not good enough, was the first one that was sold, which was so interesting to me. Like, people have so different, you know, perspectives and ideas what they like, and you know, sometimes now when I'm observing my my art from the past, it looks very interesting. Like right now I could not do it the way I was doing it back then. So even though back then I was a beginner, now when I'm looking at art, it looks like I would already master the skill because art is such an, you know, there is no no frames to it. Like when art is good enough and when it's not good enough. There's so many different perspectives we could look at it. So that's why I like to use art as an example when it comes to our feelings of 
not being good enough. It's, you know, you are a work of art and you never know when you will be good enough until you decide for yourself that you are, that you're good enough for you to put yourself into any kind of a process. So if you want to know that uh, you are actually healing, you firstly need to recognize that it's much easier now for you to recognize that you're willing to expose yourself, you're willing to go into certain situations that in the past would cause a lot of anxiety or a lot of fears. So when I was reading these different studies, I've learned that pain travels through family lines until someone is ready to heal it in themselves. By going through the agony of healing, you no longer pass the poison onto maybe the next generations that follow. You are willingly acknowledging what was a great maybe emotional block for you, what was a great limiting belief for you. So you're willing to, you know, the most important thing I think we we truly can do is to recognize what are our what are our own limitations and question them. Because this is truly the only way to overcome them. Sometimes when I'm when I'm working with people, you know, people often think they're very evolved. We often think we are very, very evolved because we've stopped challenging ourselves. But there is a great principle. For those who think they are very evolved are usually much less evolved. And for those who think they are not evolved at all are most probably much more evolved than they think. And it's important to be aware of this principle because when we think we are confident we're actually not so confident. We've stopped challenging ourselves. But when we think we are not so confident, we're actually much more confident than we think. It's the playfulness of nature, you know? That's why it's so important to often reflect on yourself, like how far you've come and how much your life is hard right now and challenging, because it's good. Challenges are good. Like storms make trees grow deeper roots, challenges help you to see how strong you actually are. Without challenges, you become weak, and when you become weak, everything becomes hard. And it's not a pleasant state to be in, because you start avoiding simple things that maybe in the past were quite natural, now they became hard. So you can notice that you're healing because now you're willingly putting yourself into hard things. Now you're willingly starting certain projects that you know you will fail at them. You know that you will not succeed. You know, I mean, you will not succeed immediately. You know, there's delay gratification to any process. You know that whatever you are starting will most probably be hard because you know so little about it. Like, whatever endeavor you go in, even if you change your job, you know, that you know so little about that job and you will need to meet new people and you will need to talk with new people and you will need to learn new skills and maybe you will not like that new job, but you will still need to stay there because you need maybe that stream of salary until you find a new one or whatever it is. When you're willing to put yourself out there, it's a sign that you're healing. And it's actually a really powerful thing that you've discovered for yourself, that you don't need to stay where you've been. Every single day you can renew yourself and every single year you will notice that you've become a completely new version of yourself. You've left the crowd behind and you've kind of emerged yourself into the unknown process of consistent change. It's consistent death and rebirth, which is something that only brave people can do because 
you know, it's much easier to just not do anything and just stay where you are, being a victim of your past and constantly blaming others and falling into this state of limiting ideas why you can't experience a life that you once wanted. But you said to yourself, well, I know I deserve much more because if life is so... You know, life is flourishing. Look at outside, the nature is flourishing. The nature doesn't need us and it will flourish quite well. So if you just think about being a part of nature, it means your, your nature is to flourish. But flourishing isn't an easy job. Like, sometimes a flower needs to grow through the concrete in order to reach the point where it will open up and bloom. But it did. Like, sometimes a tree will grow at the top of the rock, something we were talking yesterday, and it will find its way. So nature finds its way, but it's, it never says it will be easy. To find a confidence, it means there is a way to find a confidence, but there is no easy way to find a confidence. To find strength, or to lose weight, or to shape your character so you can much easily start expressing your true self is possible, but there is no easy way to achieve it, right? So often you need to, first, there are two, two parts to any process. One is learn to surrender. Learn to surrender. Surrendering means that when you stop forcing, when you notice that forcing doesn't work. <laughs> Sometimes you notice that working so hard on something only creates more resistance. Like you start suffering because you're working so hard and nothing works. It's a lesson, hey, let go a little bit. Go for a walk and, and forget about it for a moment. And let's see what will arise as maybe a new idea. This is one part. This is, I would say, this is more feminine part. It's the part of us that is teaching us to let go when something doesn't work. Then the second part is you always need to expand your intellect. Your intellect helps you to articulate what you're feeling, what you're experiencing, what you're going through, what's happening in your life, so we can gain an understanding around what you are experiencing. When understanding expands, you will see situations from much different perspectives. That's why when someone who's rich can lose everything and he will say, well, I'm not scared of losing anything because I know how to build it up. Because they have an understanding around how something works, like how money works or how how marketing works or how to build something up. And if you don't have that understanding, losing what you've built may be a scary thing. That's why we need to learn to surrender and we also need to learn to study, to expand our understanding, our intellect, our knowledge. And when we balance these two aspects of ourselves, we recognize that this is the key to any process. When it comes to emotional healing, well, maybe we need to study something about psychiatry, maybe. Or maybe the connection between mind and body, how thoughts and beliefs affect on our emotional system, and maybe stress levels, and how to self-regulate. Maybe some knowledge around this tools can help us to know ourselves better. But then also maybe some spiritual practices that can help us to let go, to surrender and get into this state of equilibrium where our nervous system can do its work and nature can take care of itself, right? So take care of these two different aspects and you will know that you're healing. This is something very, very powerful you can do. So, when you stop looking for other people to save you and you actually start looking for what can you learn from other people, like, 
What else can you learn from others? Whom you could, stu could you study? What books to read? And when you communicate with others, rather than competing with them, you start questioning them, you start wondering about their past, their lives. It's a great sign that you're healing. It's really a moment when you notice that you're becoming a good listener. Often when we are hurt, we are not used to listening. We rather make sure that the person in front of us will not hurt us, right? But as you're going through the process of healing, you become a good listener because you know that there's, you can learn from anyone. And another thing you will notice as you're healing is that you find a great remedy in quietness. You find solitude as, <laughs> as a retreat from your life. You're not scared of solitude anymore. You find it as a retreat from your life. If that's you, it's a sign that now you're confident with your own quietness or with whatever may arise, like maybe there's a lot of chaos and stress and anger happening in your life and you're okay with that. You, you want to feel it because you need to recognize how to, how to organize your life, <laughs> orchestrate it. Maybe a little bit better, like maybe your life is stressful right now. Maybe many things are falling apart. Let's see what to surrender and what to acknowledge. Like, <laughs> if, for example, if you're building a certain business idea that uh, is not growing the way you would like, maybe there's, maybe you're investing too much time into what doesn't work and you need some surrendering there, but you're lacking the right knowledge, like how it could work better, like how to use a better strategy at marketing, or <laughs> you know, whatever it is, you know the best. But it's the orchestrating between letting go and knowing more, right? A beautiful balance. So when you're finding these things, something as a part of your nature, it's a sign that you're healing. Know that you don't need to be perfect to experience a life of wonderful rewards. The most important thing you can truly do is to make sure that every single day you're willing to make one step further on your path of evolution towards towards the version of yourself you know you can become and you're becoming it and a part of you is already there but a part of you is still here and hmm, you're slowly moving towards that more evolved self. <laughs> so, my friends, I hope you found something valuable today to anyone who's going through the process of healing. I celebrate you. It's sometimes intense, sometimes it's challenging, but you're not giving up and that's... Um, that's admirable. So, I honor you, my friend. I hope you've enjoyed in today's one. Till next time, my friends, one love. Hey, my friends, I hope you've enjoyed in today's video. I want to remind you that we've just opened a fresh new store called attractpassion.com where you can find all of my work, original paintings. You can find prints of all of my art in different sizes, so go there and check it out, attractpassion.com. If you will use the code PASSION15, PASSION15, you will get 15 off onto your first order. So go there and check it out, and to anyone who would love to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I'm offering one-on-one -on -one coaching, we have some free spots once again. You can go and check out the link in the description of this video where you can find everything there. So go and check it out. If you would like to do something 
with the inspiration that you feel right now, it will help you so much to transform your life. I want you to do something with it. If you feel inspired, you have to do something with it. So my friends, till next time, one love.